Grinding wheels must be able to withstand severe stresses, substantial grinding pressure, high speeds, and a wide variety of other factors within the grinding operation. To reduce the chances of wheel breakage and possible personal injury to operators, all safety considerations must be strictly adhered to, beginning with the proper mounting of the wheel. The basic idea of safe wheel mounting is to carefully and correctly install a wheel on a machine spindle without damaging that wheel and ensuring safe operation. The process is somewhat long, but a simple one. First, a visual inspection is required by the ANSI safety code. This is because the hard, brittle nature of a grinding wheel allows it to be easily chipped or cracked if not handled correctly. Particularly the edges, corners, and areas around the hole. A visual inspection coupled with a ring test of the wheel will ensure the wheel is good, safe, and ready for installation. How do you perform a ring test on a wheel? Simply tap it with a non-metallic instrument such as a wooden or plastic hammer. Gently tap the wheel on each of its sides at approximately the 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock positions. Rotate the wheel 45 degrees and repeat the procedure. An undamaged wheel will produce a clear ringing sound. However, if the wheel is cracked, there will be a dull sound and not a clear ring. Never use a wheel unless it produces a clear ringing sound when tapped. Once the wheel has passed its ring test, the flanges of the machine mounting assembly should be inspected. The basic components of the mounting assembly are the spindle, fixed flange, and loose flange. The flanges must conform to ANSI safety requirements. These requirements include flange diameter, width of the bearing section, and thickness of the flanges at the periphery and center. Properly designed flanges are recessed to avoid putting pressure on the wheel in the area near the hole. Instead, pressure is exerted by the area of the flange called the bearing surface. The width of the bearing surface must be wide enough to conform to ANSI requirements. The diameters of the flanges must be at least one-third the diameter of the wheel. Both flanges must be identical in diameter to avoid uneven side pressure on the wheel. Thickness of the flanges is also pertinent. The flanges must be thick enough to prevent distortion because distorted flanges cause excessive uneven pressure on the wheel. Distortion may occur on either the OD or the ID of the flange and can cause a wheel to crack. Flange thickness is measured at the inside and outside of the recess. Measurements should be compared with ANSI safety specifications. Next, check the condition of the flanges as well. Flatness of the bearing surface may be checked by placing a straight edge across the surface at various points as shown. There should be no clearance between the straight edge and the bearing points. No burrs or foreign material should be present on the bearing surface either, as it could cause uneven pressure on the wheel. The spindle diameter must also be checked for deformities in the diameter. It too must conform with the ANSI safety requirements. The spindle diameter can be measured with calipers. Of course, both the spindle and the fixed flange must be checked for runout. A magnetic base dial indicator is used for this type of measurement. The gauge is affixed to the machine base and the dial indicator placed in position on the spindle. The assembly is then rotated manually. The procedure is then repeated on the flange bearing area. Total indicator runout, TIR, must be within the limits set by the machine's manufacturer. If the runout is greater than allowed, the spindle must be repaired or replaced. Just prior to mounting the wheel, an operator must also check to be sure that the pilot and bearing surfaces are clean. A new clean blotter with a diameter slightly larger than that of the spindle must be placed over the spindle and against the fixed flange. Blotters serve many purposes, such as equalizing pressure over the entire bearing surface, compensating for irregularities in the wheel surface, and helping to grip the wheel in the mounting assembly. Now the wheel may be slid over the arbor. If the wheel is marked mount up or mount down, then that particular marking must be placed in the proper position. 
This helps to maintain wheel balance and running truth. The wheel should slide easily onto the arbor. If the wheel fits too tightly, thermal expansion could occur with wheel breakage following. When the wheel is placed into position, another clean blotter is placed on the arbor, followed by the loose flange. When a multiple screw flange is used, bolts may be placed into the holes and hand tightened. It is very important that these bolts be tightened down evenly and uniformly. Otherwise, the flange may become distorted and cause wheel damage. The proper methods for tightening bolts is to tighten bolts opposite each other. A torque wrench should be used to apply torque in accordance with the specifications of the machine manufacturer. Once tightened, a check may be made with a feeler gauge to make sure that both flanges are in good contact with the blotters and to ensure that no springing has occurred. The gauge should not fit between the flange and the blotter. After the wheel is mounted and before it is actually used, it must be balanced. This is accomplished by removing the entire mounting assembly from the machine and placing it in either a balance stand with knife rollers or a balance stand with parallel ways. The balancing weights in the spindle are shifted until the wheel remains motionless in any position. Now the assembly is balanced and may be replaced onto the machine. Before the wheel is started, a guard must be placed in position on the machine. The guard is a safety device which acts to prevent pieces of the wheel from flying out of the machine in the event of wheel breakage. Finally, the wheel is then run at normal operating speed for one minute before dressing. The operator must be careful at this time not to stand in line with the wheel in case of breakage. After the wheel has run for a period of time, it can be dressed. Mounting a smaller wheel with a single nut setup is similar to mounting with a multiple screw setup. The flanges are similar in design to the larger ones, having a bearing surface and recess. The flanges must be identical in size, diameter, and design. As in the previous operation, the wheel must be ring tested. Smaller wheels usually are supplied with blotters affixed to them. The wheel and the blotter are placed on the machine spindle and secured with flanges. The flange must be tightened enough to ensure that the wheel will be held securely. However, it must not be tightened so much that it causes distortion of the flanges. Thin wheels require a slightly different mounting technique than thicker wheels. Here, flanges should be at least one-third the wheel diameter. This is because thin wheels require more support to prevent distortion or deflection of the wheel, which could cause breakage. When tightening the flange on a thin wheel setup, it is important not to over tighten. Thin wheels are very susceptible to distortion from uneven pressure and could break. In summary, mounting procedures are such that the wheel should not be subjected to any uneven pressures, which could cause warping or bending of the wheel. The dimensions of the flanges and spindle must conform with the requirements found in applicable safety codes. Their condition and cleanliness must be checked. The wheel must be sounded prior to mounting. Mounting screws or nuts must be tightened evenly, but not excessively. The wheel must be balanced. Prior to dressing the wheel, it must be run for one minute at normal operating speed.